Hello and welcome back to the shop. So today I'm going to be dragging this old bench grinder out and giving this thing a, a once over. It's it's in pretty bad shape. It's an old Harbor Freight unit and the wheels are wore out and it just needs a good tune up and I need to do that because I'm going to start weight matching and balancing the connecting rods on the diesel. So I need to be able to grind the small end of the rod to do the weight matching that I need to do. You can see those wheels are ex in extremely bad shape. I will replace no wheel before it's time. But uh, this is one of those do's as I say, not as I do type scenarios. You should never run a wheel down that low. It's very dangerous to do so because you can see that the, the rest is extremely far away from that wheel. And that creates a very dangerous situation as well as when the wheel gets extremely tiny like that the thing can just shatter and come off of there so not a good situation I've also pulled the guards or the oh, I don't know what you call them shields I guess shields off of it for a project where the shields were in the way and that's uh, something you really shouldn't do either so I might put those back on just to be thorough but Anyway, my first step here is I, uh, I want to drag this thing over closer to the workbench and I want to clean it up really good and I want to take those wheels off. I need to find out what size they are. It's been so long since I bought this thing. I can't remember if it's a 6-inch wheel or an 8-inch wheel. I think they're 6-inch, but I'm going to peel the wheel, pull the wheels off and verify that. So, anyway, um, there's a lot of swarf on the bench here. This is just, it's bolted to an old... A roll around cart. One of the secrets to operating in a very small space, my, my shop is only 20 by 20, is to try and put everything on wheels that you can so you can move stuff around to kind of take advantage of the space that you're stuck with. I have plans to build a bigger shop at some point in the future, but for now I have to make this 20 by 20 space work. So anyway, this is on a cart that's mobile. It can be moved around. I can move it out of the way. I can move it into the center of the shop and I've been doing some milling on aluminum recently you can see all that swarf so the first step is to clean all this up and you might be tempted to just grab an air nozzle something like this and just blow that stuff off but you never want to do that and the reason is you could blow chips into areas that can compromise the integrity of the tools that you're working with. So you don't want to blow chips down underneath of the ways of a mill table. You certainly don't want to blow chips up into the bearing housing on a lathe or something like that. So um, a good rule is you never use an air nozzle when you're cleaning equipment like this because you're going to blow chips into places that they're never supposed to get to when you use the, the tool naturally. So a better option is just maybe an old chip brush like this and you can kind of sweep the, the stuff out of the way. And better yet is a shop vac and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll drag this over, plug a shop vac in and I'll clean all this stuff up. Alright, so step one is going to be to pull the guards off and I'm going to pull the, pull the wheels off, the old wheels, and just to verify the arbor size or the hole that's in the center of the grinding wheel and the diameter of it. I need to find those two dimensions before I can go up to the hardware store and, and get some replacement parts. New 12 millimeter. Should have known that most of the Harbor Freight stuff is made in China. No 
always thought the 12 millimeter was kind of an oddball size. Very good, so I'm extremely glad that the sticker is still left on this thing because the sticker gives me all the information I need. So it's a six inch wheel and those leftover dimensions are the average size and the, the width of the wheel. I love it when a plan comes together. And since the, the rest was a metric size, I'm going to assume that these are as well. And it looks like I might be wrong. So that one's up in the air because 19 millimeter and 3 quarter are essentially the same size. As you can tell, these things have washers, and the washers have to be faced so on the inside and the outside. Now I'm going to measure this hole size. Now this is a very, very cool tool that I bought at Harbor Freight, and it's just a micrometer, but it gives dimensions in fractions. So it's really cool that you can actually read out half an inch. And when you get into some of your drill bits that are oddball sizes, that, that can be very handy. So now I've determined that my wheel size is six inches by three quarters wide by half an inch arbor. So now I can run up to the hardware store and get a couple wheels. Okay, here we go. You've got my grinding wheel here. I wanted to get two, a coarse and a fine. They only had the one style there. And this looks to be a coarse, or it says general purpose, so maybe it's in between those two ones, I'm not sure. So, I could dress up this wheel and use it. And I might, I, I have a wheel dresser somewhere around here. I'm going to see if I can find that thing. But for now, I think what I'm going to do is just put a wire wheel on there because this is kind of a handy item that you can have on a bench grinder. Now, ironically enough, these things used to be common. In fact, if you went and bought a bench grinder, it would come with a grinding wheel on one side and a wire wheel on the other. And there's been a lot of pushback because uh, too many people were getting impaled with these wire bristles in the eye. And uh, really their fault because they weren't wearing eye protection. I mean, I've had these things impale me in the cheek a bunch of times, and I just keep on going because I've got goggles on. And when I'm done, you know, I pull it out of my cheek, and away we go. But if you don't wear eye protection with one of these wire wheels, they can be quite dangerous. So you'll see, like if you go someplace like Harbor Freight to buy a bunch grinder, you won't find one with the wire wheel on it typically because of the safety aspect, the legal liability aspect, they're, they're not on there, but thankfully uh, our local hardware store still carries these, so you can install them once you get your bench grinder home and get it working. So I'll go ahead and put this on, and uh, it'll be cool. So let me get the stuff out of the package and then we'll continue forward. All right, we've got the stuff out of the boxes. I'll zoom in on this a little bit. And here we go. So, originally this thing was set up, it had a fine wheel on the right side and it had a coarse wheel on the left side. So, I'm going to leave the coarse wheel on the left side because just out of habit, that's the side I go to the most. And I'm going to put the wire wheel on the right side. So. 
You'll notice there's a little bushing here, and that's just to make it work on different size arbors. So without the bushing, it would work on a 5 8 arbor, and with the bushing, it'll work with the half inch that we have. So I'm going to stick this on here. And just as a point of reference, you'll notice that as this thing is working, it's going to be spinning downward, like so. And the natural inclination when that happens is to tighten the nut. Because as you turn it on, the torque is going to try and twist that nut clockwise, which would tighten it. Just as a point of reference, we'll notice that there may be a difference in, on the other side. When we start turning to the other side, that may not be true. So, right now I can see that right off the bat we're going to have to get some washers for this because there's too much space here for the nut to grab. We need to take up about half an inch of space. Let's see if I can come up with something to fill that gap. like it'll do the trick. I'm just going to use an impact to tighten this. If you do this, you may want to make sure that you use something that's not 500 foot-pounds. This little gun's only rated at 70 when it was brand new, so I know that I can just kind of burp it on there like that, and then try and spin it I'll hold it on the other side to make sure it's good and tight. That seems like it will work. And we'll get one more. There we go. Okay, time to turn to the other side. Once again, three screws. And we'll go ahead and pop this off. But this may be left-hand thread instead of right-hand thread. So I'm going to try it left-handed first since it's already set up that way to tighten the other side. And it is. So clockwise remove this side. And the reason they do that is so when you flip the switch and power this thing on as the arbor is turning clockwise, on the left side of this unit if you left that alone and you had a normal right-hand thread, it could spin the nut off over time. So you'll find that most bench grinders are set up that way with a left hand thread on the left side and right hand thread on the right side. So, okay. This setup has several bushings. You can run this on just about any size grinder that you want. That's a huge arbor. So I'm going to figure out which one of these actually fits mine. That's the smallest one, so evidently half inches as low as it goes. Oop. To move my guard out of the way. Arrest. some of that grinding dust out of there before I pull it on. So you'll notice that these bushings, all they do is locate the wheel, center it on the arbor, and then once you tighten the nut down, that's what actually holds it. Again, we'll hold the right side and make sure that this cannot spin, and we're good. Okay, now I can start putting these on. I guess you don't technically have to do this. 
used to be the bench grinders didn't come with all these guards. They were just open with maybe a rest in the front, and that's it. But unlike some safety equipment, these don't actually impede the use of practicality of a bench grinder. So it's ironic to me that some safety equipment, at least in my eyes, makes the tool more dangerous than if it didn't have it. I'll give you an example. A circular saw that has the guard that you have to lift out of the way in order to cross cut a board. To me that doesn't make sense because now you're, you're occupying one hand in order to move the safety item out of the way because if you don't do that you can't push the guard out of the way and it, it messes with your cuts. So sometimes the safety equipment goes overboard but it is what it is. Alright, here is my shields and I'm going to give them a quick scrub and we'll install those. Another good example of a piece of safety equipment that sometimes gets in the way and has to be removed. All right, now I'm going to adjust my guards. This one looks like it's already pretty good. I'm just going to tighten it up. I just want to run this up until it almost touches the wheel. You'll find that if it touches the wheel, when you try and power it up, it won't even power up because the starting torque of an electric motor is much less than the running torque. But now my big question is, should I put this guard on? Yeah, it doesn't seem to be in the way. powered up and see how she works. The instructions with the wheel say to power this thing on and just leave it go for a minute or so. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand back and just turn it on and let it go. Is that the friction of the wire wheel, really?
That way we will just have the clearance and stuff a little bit, that's all. So I'm going to test the grinder. You notice this thing was vibrating a little bit. And that's typical when you put a brand new wheel on because even though the bushings are there, sometimes it doesn't center up perfectly and there will be a slight imbalance. But what I found is once you start grinding on something, typically it will center up that wheel enough that the vibration will get better. It may not go away completely, but they typically will get better. And there you have it. Old becomes new again. So, I like this wheel. doesn't seem to make a lot of dust. So, now I can start weight matching my connecting rods for the diesel. And then that'll be the next thing I do out here in the shop. Thanks for watching.